for coming and showing us your beautiful films. Um, here you go. Um, do you guys want to tell us a little bit um, about your projects? I think they're very different projects, but uh, they, I think they both have like a very sensorial, tactile um, um, feel for me. I feel like you're both so close to your characters that I can feel them and touch them. The cinematography is uh, it's extremely beautiful, and, and I think it helps really uh, bring in those amazing ladies that, uh, that you brought to the screen. So if you want to tell us a, maybe a little bit about that, your, uh, your cinematic approach to uh, the stories of this wonderful woman that you brought us. Well, I have Alison Clayman is in Japan, who's the director, and on FaceTime, so she can see you guys. I don't know if you can see her. <laughs> and Alison is also the cinematographer, so let's see. Try to say it. Um, yeah, I think, uh, can everyone hear me? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, there you go. Okay, great. Wow. Um, yeah, I think uh, to make a film about an artist is always a unique challenge. You have to come with a lot of respect for um, a person's individual, uh, for their work and for how you're representing something that's visual for them, but also their vision, their personality, their style. Um, so, you know, Time with Carmen, I think this film is a very intimate film, um, as Tony, who's there and you recognize from the film, um, can attest to. Uh, it, it's a lot of time spent in one space uh, with her. So I think I'm glad that it feels intimate and rich, and I think we wanted to bring respect to her work, but also to make you feel like you were getting to spend time with her as well. <laughs> We, uh, we filmed Tocando La Luz over the course of three and a half years, so um, we got to know the women and their families very well. And um, we had a level of coordination with them that we haven't in other films because of um, what it takes to get permits and, and also just moving around the city. And so we talked a lot about what was going on in their lives and what was important to them. And, um, and then we would plan together when to um, they would tell us about things happening in their lives, and then we would go out together and, and film those things. But it was, it was always an ongoing conversation, and we spent a lot of time um, with them both filming and, and just being together, having dinner together, um, lunch, just talking um, and hanging out. And, and Tim can talk a little bit more about the approach. Tim is the producer and cinematographer, and he can talk a little bit more about the approach. Thank you guys for coming. Wow, this is a huge audience. Um, in terms of the cinematography, I, I'm not quite sure what to say other than that we, we just, um, Havana is a very cinematic city, probably one of the most cinematic cities in the world. Um, and it has such an energy to it. And the lives of these women had a, as we got to know them, it sort of felt like um, their lives were like a novel. And we tried to bring that sort of a sensibility to how we, shot it and um, there's a lot of verite and there's, a, there's also a lot of um, composed uh, shots in there so uh, it, it's a mix. Yeah that's right we some, sometimes shot with two cameras like in the some of the um, performances. Yeah. Um, we have a short Q&A today so I'm going to start with your questions right away to see who's got a pressing question. Yes right there. If you can like stand up and like shout a little bit I'm so sorry about that. The question was how you found the three women and made the initial connection with them. And we, um, we both Tim and I were interested in Cuba for a very long time because of the um, political history, the, because it has such a rich culture, and, um, and because of the relationship between the United States and Cuba. So we started probably a year before we traveled there, we did a ton of research. We pre-interviewed people who had spent a lot of time in Cuba. We read a lot. We watched a ton of um, amazing Cuban films that helped us think about the story and the culture. And, um, and we found an article about a cinema club for the blind, which is the, the cinema club that you see in the film. And, um, and we were really intrigued by that. We wanted to know how it worked and, and why it existed there. And um, so we went, and that's how, and we, and we, met, um, we met both the founders of the Cinema Club and, and the people who participate, and then we, they helped us connect with 
the blind community in Cuba, and that's how we met the three women that we um, ultimately ended up pro profiling in the film. And it was when we found um, the, the connection between that struggle for independence and all three stories that we started to, we, we did actually have a couple of other characters that we were following, but when we found that common theme and we started to see it in, in, in the culture um, itself, then we, we decided to focus on the three women. Yeah. So the question is, how? When did? Oh, sorry. When did um, Millie's mother reveal um, the the secret about Millie's health to us? And how long did we know before Millie found out? Oh yeah, it was an yeah. It was. Um, so we sat down to do an interview with Millie's mother because um, you know Millie was telling us that be, told us that she was struggling with her parents for independence. So we sat down with her mother thinking that we were doing an interview about about that, you know, getting her mother's perspective. Um, and we, so we had no indication that there was uh, something about Millie's health that she didn't know. And in the course of what we thought was gonna be, you know, a 30 to 45 minute interview, um, it actually turned into a half day and she told us this. And it put us, um, in a very challenging spot because it was, she found out two years later. Um, so we, and we felt like, you know, we weren't, it wasn't, we were, you know, we, we, you know, we were upset that she didn't, didn't know, but we also felt like it wasn't our position to tell her. Um, and yeah, it was a very challenging position to be in as a filmmaker and as a, a human being. Yeah, it, um, no, we talked about it and we talked about, you know, we had um, long conversations about why and, and um, actually she, she did come to us at one point and say, I know my mother has told you something about my health that I don't know and put it in the film so I can find out. And I said, I, I can't do that. Your mother, you know, your family has to tell you and um, it's not, you know, we had to explain, it's just, it's not our position to tell you and it's a conversation that you and your family need to have and I, I can't put it in the film if your family doesn't have that conversation with you first. So it's very complicated. Well, <clears throat> yeah, Carmen, uh, actually she's been in a state of shock for about five years since uh, her paintings are now uh, in museums and she's become well known. Uh, and the film uh, also was uh, um, a, a surprise to her and she enjoyed it very much. She enjoyed the filming process. Uh, she told me that she felt that she learned about herself by having to think about the type of questions that were being asked of her. And um, she will be thrilled when I tell her later on that you were all here and that she was the size of a... <laughs> 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 uh, she's now uh, 100 and almost 100 and, uh, 106 months, 101, and she's still working. She works every day. And, um, I think that what both films share is uh, how to deal with adversity and uh, the nobility of spirit. And I think that all four women, in a way, share that. We, we did. We, um, we created, Tim and I created an um, audio described version of the film before we released it publicly and we went back to Havana and shared it with the women and their families and some of the people that worked closely um, on the film with us. And um, it was an extraordinary experience. And they, um, you know, we just, w it was a private room and, and we said, you know, tell, we really want to know your honest thoughts about it. And uh, they were all, they didn't have any problems with anything that was in the film. They, the audio description, they wanted that to be a little more precise. 